I'm not actually reading text on my phone, just in case anybody wants to know, but I have the Bible on my phone. And I, the first thing, again, I'm Connie Barnes, and I'm from this area, so it makes it a little, makes me a little nervous to get up and, and talk, especially in front of my aunt and my friends that know me. So, uh, but when I was growing up, um, I'm a Barnes from this area. And anybody that knows anything about the Barneses, they kind of all look at you funny. And then when I tell them I've never drank a day in my life and anything like that, they think they want my autograph. They think I'm lying, you know. That kind of thing. But I was raised in Charco, Texas, and my mom and my grandparents were Christians, and that was how I learned about God. But I will tell you, the one thing that always got me was when I was in school. They would always tell me I was an at-risk kid, and that meant that I was hot-headed, and that came from the barn side, so of course my barn shows on occasion, and Gypsy knows that. And uh, so they always acted like I was never gonna amount to anything, and that bothered me more than you can imagine, to have one teacher after another teacher after another teacher tell you that you're not gonna amount to anything. Well, I stand here today with an MBA, so I have a master's in business, and I was the first Barnes in our family to ever go to college. And I was the first one to get my associates, my bachelors, and my masters. And after this last week, I'm now a certified pipeline welding inspector. But none of that could I have done on my own. Uh, there's absolutely no way I could have done that on my own. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, I don't know where I'd be right now. Uh, matter of fact, I would probably not be in a good place at all. Um, <clears throat> I grew up a little bit about the way I grew up. We were really poor, you know, and our family was real, real poor. And the hard part of what I'm gonna tell you tonight, it's not for anybody's sympathy. It's not for anybody to say, you know, hey, poor you or, or anything like that. It's to show you what the glory of God can do in your life, no matter what circumstances you live in, no matter where you're at, what you're doing. You know, if you ask, he's going to be there. And I remember growing up as a kid, and this is where my phone comes in. My grandma told me, when you're scared, to read Psalms 91. And Psalms 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in, high, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the pet perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flies by day, nor by the pestilence that stops, that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands he shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And I remember, you know, at first I wasn't old enough to read, so my grandma read it to me. And then when I was old enough to read, with the type of life that I had, I was always afraid. You know, I was afraid of things that happened at school, getting in trouble at school, because I did that a lot. And then I was afraid when I'd get home, because my dad was a Vietnam vet. And anybody that knew my dad, they knew that he would do anything for anybody. But when he was drunk, he was mean. And I think, you know, my mom was kind of scared for me to get up here and say stuff, because she said, you know, I don't want anybody to think bad of your dad. And I said, Mom, Dad was sick. You know, it wasn't my dad. When my dad was sober, he was the best man you would have ever known. But when he was drunk, he was the meanest man you ever knew. He was six foot five. Funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but he was six foot five, and I remember, like, you know, growing up when my dad would be drinking, he would just get mean. 
So the most licks I got from my dad was 50 with a coat hanger and the least was 15. And I fist fought my father at 14 years old to keep him from putting me through a wall. You know, and that's the kind of life that I had. Now, outside of that, people didn't know it. Yes. <laughs> but people didn't really know it. They didn't know what had happened. And you know, my mom, for years, I didn't understand. I was like, why, how could you love this man, mom? How could you stay? How could you let us go through what we went through? And you know what she told me? She said, I love your dad no matter what. She said, your dad, he needs help. And the only person that can help him is God. And my dad, he never went to church. He wouldn't go for nothing. It was like, I'm not going to put my feet in church. I'd be a hypocrite. I can't tell you how many times I heard that. Well, three years before my dad passed away, my dad got baptized in the church. And it shocked me to, to my core. Because growing up, when you're in a situation when you're a kid and you're being, you know, abused or beat on or, or treated the way that I was treated sometimes, and I was the protector of my sisters and brothers. So a lot of times I got the brunt of stuff because I would say I did something even if I didn't do it just so that they wouldn't get in trouble. You know, so at 12 years old, when you're a 12 year old and you have thoughts in your head of, well, let me think, how can I do this? I can skin a deer. You know, I actually thought that it was a dream. I thought that I stood over my dad's bed with a knife and that I was gonna skin him out just like a deer. You know, let him bleed out, not skin, but bleed out like a deer. And then we would never hurt again. And I truly thought it was just a dream. Until several years later, my mom asked me, she said, Connie, did you ever stand over your dad's bed with a knife? And all of a sudden it just kind of hit me like, oh my God, it wasn't a dream? And I said, why, what did dad say? And she said, well, your dad said that you were standing there and you were looking at him and you were holding a knife but he was too drunk to move. And all of a sudden you turned around and you just walked away. Well, in this dream that I thought I had, I heard a voice in my head that said, Connie, they'll blame your mama. And I love my mom with all my heart. And that's what saved my life, my dad's life that day and mine. You know, for a 12 year old to feel like that's the only thing that they can do to protect themselves is a very scary thing. And then when I was 14, I watched some crazy movie with Farrah Fawcett called The Burning Dead where the woman was abused by her husband and she set her husband on fire. And that set a whole nother pattern of thought in my head. You know, thank God I never did that because God loved me enough not to. But it took me a long time. I literally hated my dad's guts. And I can say that with all honesty. I hated that man with a passion. I wouldn't have cared what happened to him. I would tell everybody I loved him. I was his favorite. That's what he told everybody. But I hated him. Until one day, it was really, really bad. And we had a huge fight. And I took off running next door to my grandma's. And I never believed that my dad didn't remember what he had done. You know, I always thought he's lying, you know. He knows, he's just lying. That's what would go through my head. I took off to my grandma's and he was gonna run over me and he couldn't find the keys. So he came back and he beat every window out of that car except for the front windshield. And the next morning when he woke up, he ran in there and got my mom. He was like, Nellie, Nellie, you need to call the cops, hurry. Mom said, why? He said, because somebody beat all the windows out of the car. Well, it was him and he didn't even remember. So that day when I said I would never come home again and I told him I hated him, my dad went and got help. He went to the VA hospital. He was there for about nine months. When he found out all the things that he had done to us, because we had to tell all the doctors everything that he had done, and they played it back to him, and he had to listen to it. Then he tried to commit suicide, and I thank God to this day he did not succeed. Because I can honestly say, when my dad got out, he was a different person. He finally got the help that he needed from being in Vietnam. I mean, I pulled guns out of my dad's hands to keep him from shooting himself or begged him to throw up pills because he took pills. That's what my whole life was like at home. You know, other people didn't know that. We didn't tell nobody. We were great at keeping secrets. You know, but that is what happened. And it was because my mom loved God so much that she loved my dad so much. And my mom saved my dad. Every day she'd be sneaky. She'd go in there and turn the TV on to a Christian station. And she did that for years. Because then he'd have to get up and go change the channel. 
Well, after a while, they kind of got tired of changing the channel because if she walked back to the kitchen, she'd switch it back over to the Christian channel. And she did that for about 12 years, I think, before he finally started listening. And so when my dad got baptized, my mom called me and I kept saying, Mom, are you for real? Dad? Dad's going to go get baptized. And he said, yeah, Dad is. And for us, that was one of the hugest miracles ever. And he didn't do it because he found out he had cancer. He didn't know he had cancer for another four years. He did it because he changed his life. And for four years, I had four amazing years with my dad to get to know my dad again, to get to love my dad. And I'll never forget, it was about two years after he had gone to the VA, he called me outside one time and he wanted to apologize. And it was the first time he had ever apologized to me for anything. And he said, baby girl, why didn't you kill me? I know you could. Because my dad taught me how to hunt. I could shoot better than most of my cousins. I was really, really good at those kind of boy things when I was growing up because I was the second girl. So the first one learned to cook. And Aunt Gypsy knows I don't, I don't, well, I can't put her name on it. But not back then. <laughs> but, you know, it was like he taught me to do all those things. And so he didn't understand why I didn't kill him. Like, why, why didn't you? And I said, you have no idea how close you came. But it was for the grace of God that I did not. Because I love my mom so much. Well, my dad, he found out in February that he had cancer. He had a grade three carcinoma. And he told me, I need you to make me a promise. And I said, what is it, daddy? Anything you want. Because by that time, I finally loved my dad. Three years later, I can say I went from hating him to loving him. And that was because God loved me. That's the only reason I was able to forgive my dad for everything he did. The only reason. And I said, Daddy, what is it? He said, I do not want to die in this hospital. He said, they're going to take me home. The doctor said they can't do anything. I have a do not resuscitate. And I want you to make sure that you keep a promise to me. And I said, anything. What do you want? He said, you got a promise no, bad, no matter how bad I hurt, how bad I beg to go to a hospital. You don't let them take me because I want to die in my bed. That was the hardest promise I ever kept because hearing my dad hurt was horrible. And I went in the other room and I got on my knees after about, you know, I guess he really had only made it about seven days from the time he found out to the time he finally passed. But I got on my knees, and well, before I got on my knees, I was in there and I said, he caught me crying and he said, baby girl, don't worry about it. I kick things in the rear better, bigger than this one, except we didn't use the word rear. And, <laughs> and, uh, I said, well, at that time I was kind of heavy, and I said, well, Daddy, you can't go to the fat lady sings, and I'm not singing. You know, it was kind of a joke between me and my dad. Well, after about the third day, he was in so much pain, I couldn't deal with it. And I went in the bedroom, and I got on my knees where nobody could see me behind the door, and I begged, and I said, God, please, just take him home. Because I know where he's going. He gave you his heart. And all the bad things that my dad did in his life no longer existed because he gave his heart to God. All of it's gone. You know, every single thing that he did in Vietnam, everything that he did, you know, in this world, as soon as he asked for forgiveness and he was baptized in God's, you know, under God's grace, he was forgiven. That was it. You know, and I can say that when my dad passed away, I was holding his hand singing Amazing Grace, and he had one tear roll down his face. And he quit breathing. And that was it. And it was the most beautiful, peaceful thing I had ever seen in my life. And I know at that point, he was in God's hands. There was no struggle. There was no pain. There was no nothing. It was just my dad and God. And that was it. And if that doesn't make people believe in God, then there's a million more miracles out there that do. You know, I mean, I tell my students, I used to be a teacher. And I would talk to all the at-risk kids and I would tell them that story. That exact story. Everything that had happened to me, how it changed my life. And the one thing I tell them is, nobody sets your destiny. Not who your daddy is, not who your mom is, who your aunt, your uncle, your friends down the street. None of that stuff makes a difference. It's what you think of yourself. You set your destiny. God gives us the ability to choose. It's all choices we make that turns us into who we are. And if I would have believed the teachers, I would have been a failure. If I would have believed what all the kids said, I would have been a failure. If I would have believed any of those other things, I'd have been a failure. But God told me I was worth something. And that's what's amazing to me. My grandparents told me I was worth something. You know, I was blessed because I had grandparents on my mom's side that believed in God a lot. 
And there's another thing that I want, and it, it kind of helps me, and it makes me think about it. And it's in Deuteronomy 7:17, and it says, If you should say in your heart, These nations are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember well what the, good, what the Lord God did to the pharaohs and to all of Egypt. You know, what comes out of your mouth, it comes out of your heart. So when you tell yourself you're a failure, guess what? You're a failure. If you tell yourself you can succeed, you can. And so when all those teachers were telling me I was at risk, finally one day I got really mad and I said, you know what, you're right. I am at risk. You are absolutely right. Who said it had to be bad? I told them I'm at risk for success. That's what it is. And there ain't a son of a gun in this world that's going to keep me from doing what God wants me to do. I don't care if they're a teacher. I don't care if they're a principal. I don't care if they're a minister. I don't care who they are. If I know that God is telling me to do something and I feel it in the pit of my stomach, I'm doing it for God. I was scared to death to get up here today. I really was because I thought, I'm not real sure what I can contribute. But know this, God loves each and every one of us. It doesn't matter whether we have money or we don't. That's not who makes. That's not what makes us. What makes us is what's in your heart, how you treat other people. And when people ask me about my parents, I say, my daddy taught me to be strong. He was the strongest man I ever knew. I never knew a man stronger than him in my entire life, and I have yet to meet one to this day. And I don't mean strength in your arms or your legs or anything like that, but just the strength to wake up every morning and breathe. For him, that was difficult. When he died, it was it was a graceful thing for him. It's what he wanted for so many years. He just wanted to go. My dad taught me how to be strong. He also taught me to be stubborn. And there were a lot of things that my dad taught me. But my mom, she taught me how to love unconditionally, the way that God wants us to love people. She said, I married your father, for better or worse, it didn't matter. And I will be here with him until the day he dies. And when he goes to heaven, I will be standing by his side someday. And that's the truth. That's what will happen. So people ask me, well, you know, gosh, with a life like that, why do you laugh so much? I'm like, hey, guys, happy to be alive. <laughs> that's just the truth of it all. But to be honest, I wouldn't trade my parents or anything that I went through for anything. Because God was with me the whole way. He is what picked me up and carried me when I couldn't walk. You know, he's what made me love my dad again. He showed me how to love my dad again. When by all counts, he had no right for me to love him. By worldly counts, he had no right for everything that he had done to me. But I can say right now, I can stand before you right now, and with God as my witness, I love my dad with all of my heart. And I wouldn't trade that man or my mom for anyone in this world. You know, and so the people that know me, they know a couple of things. I don't lie. So if I'm standing here before you today and I'm telling you that this is how God helped me in my life, that's the truth. I don't lie. I don't like to lie. It makes me feel horrible. I just don't even like doing it. You know, and I was raised that way. But everything that we do in life should be for God. It's by God. We don't do it on our own. Okay? It's all about that. And tonight, what we're here for is to basically, because without people being here, Without people that love God, without the people like you and I that are here, we're the only ones that can make a difference. Nobody else out there, if you're worldly and you don't care about other people, you can't make a difference in anyone's life. But we can make a difference if we try. And that's the reason that I'm here today. Is it hard to tell what happened in my life? You better not believe it. It's really hard. And I'm surprised I did it without crying because I told Mary Sue if I start crying, she's supposed to like make a slap mark like she's going to slap me or something. So I'll know that I'm not supposed to get too mushy. But, you know, God, he knew from way early that if I didn't have somebody to love me, truly love me, that I was going to be on not a very good path. And so he put three of the most wonderful boys in the world in my life. And those boys, that's what I lived for and breathed for for the longest time before I really realized that God was there holding me. You know, he gave me a son at 16 years old, 17 when he, when he was born. And that was my oldest Mark. Well, Mark now has given me, how many? Five. <laughs> I had to count for a minute. He's given me five amazing grandbabies. And then my son Kyle, he's given me one. So I had three boys and two grandsons. And my daughter-in-law, when she got pregnant, I prayed really hard for a girl. 
because I had all these guns to give away, but nobody took my jewelry. And uh, so I prayed really hard, and he had triplet girls. So my son said, Mom, you're never allowed to pray that hard again, ever. <laughs> so I've already been informed that I better save money because i got to pay for parties and graduation and everything else. But, but, you know, God gives you what you ask for. So if you want it, you just speak it, and it happens. But Satan, the one thing that he wants to do in your life is to destroy you. He's what puts doubt in your mind. You know, I was told, you can't get your CPWI. You don't know how to weld. Well, guess what? I made a 95. I was one of five female welding inspectors that passed this last week when I was up there. And that was by the grace of God because that was the hardest test I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> but... You know, you have to want it, you've got to believe it, and you've got to believe what is in the Bible. If, if, if you don't believe the words that are in this book, can I borrow your Bible, please? If you don't believe the words that are here, and if you don't believe that this is the literal word of God, then you're in the wrong place. In your heart, not here. You need to be here so you believe it. But in, in, you're in the wrong place if you don't believe that. So you need to think about those things. You know, this isn't just haphazardly that you stopped here today. People invited you or they wanted you to ask somebody else to come. You know, so that's what it is. But these are his literal words. I mean, you read the piece that says how much he loves us and that he will carry you. You know, sometimes in our world we get so busy, and, and I'm one of those, and, and any of my friends know that. I'll get so busy that I forget, and I start trying to control things on my own, like I'm, you know, real powerful or something. And God always has a way of kicking me in the shin to tell me, hey girl, it isn't you that does this. It's me that does this for you. You know? And I got lots of bruises. I can prove it. I had a <laughs> the lady goes, Wow, you got bruises on your legs when I was getting my pedicure, so but that's from him kicking me, I guarantee you. Because every once in a while I get a little too full of myself and I start thinking that I could do it on my own. And that that point's when I fall. And usually when I fall, I fall really hard. And that's what, because he's trying to teach me, you know, to look at something in a different perspective. And if I don't pay attention, it's going to happen. So I have this saying that I love, and it's in the Bible, and it says, Be still, for I am God. And I have that plastered all over. Because every time I get to moving a little too fast, and I quit thinking about God, I go back and I read that, and I think, yeah. Because there's no way I can hold a candle or do anything near as good as he does. You know, I shouldn't even try. What I have to try to do is I have to try to love everybody. I have to try to do good. And it's hard. I'm not telling you that I'm a saint because anybody that knows me knows I'm not. I've been mad. I've said bad words. Tony, don't tell him anything. <laughs> but I've said things. I've done things in my past I'm not real proud of. But the one thing that I know is that through everything, thick and thin, God's been there for me. So have the people that have loved me and that taught me about God. And it's important to me, and it's important that this county and this community get back to where it needs to be. And that's the reason that I'm here. That's why I'm talking today. Because I'm hoping and praying that somehow everybody will be touched. And the next time that we do something like this, you'll bring more people. Until eventually we have enough people in this town that believes in God, that wants to have our county and our community back and our country back, that we can be a voice. And that's pretty much it. And speak his love, his peace, and his compassion. It is by his his will that he made this happen to me. And my question is, how many know or how many of you believe? You know, there's power in prayer. Amen. And there's nothing impossible for our Lord. We believe that. All right, I just want to speak a little bit about my life. Um, and it's all about power and prayer and how the Lord can touch a life, can reconcile, can heal. And it can set you free from bondage, from being a thief, from being an alcoholic, a drug addict, anything, anything that's out there. There's nothing impossible for me. When I was little, I was about what, two or three, and my mom says I would go around the house with a Bible 
and a sock as a tie and a, a brush as a mic. Why did I, why was I doing that? I have no idea. At that time I didn't know, I was like, oh, well, maybe I was crazy or something. Not knowing that the Lord had a calling. When he's got a calling in your life, you can try to run, you can try to hide, you can do anything, but remember you're still tied to him. Because he created you, he called you out, and as all of that, the Lord was moving. I would bless the house or whatever. And there was one of my aunts, she had a sickness on her back, lower back. Yeah, Emma. On her neck. And like I said, power and prayer and nothing impossible for our Lord, as long as you have that faith. All right, for months and months she would go to see the doctors. They could not find nothing. They did not know what was going on. But when the Lord puts his hand and has his purpose and timing for your healing, your deliverance, or your time for salvation, he's going to do what he's going to do. When she came over to the house one day, this is what I say. There's power in prayer. My mom says, I put my hand on her neck. And glory be to God, at that moment, at that instant, that pain that she had for months, vanished. The Lord healed her right there and then, within seconds. What the doctors couldn't figure out, you know what, he knew. He knew the purpose, he knew the plan, what he was going to do for her. Okay, and then we would go to church. After that, we started going to church and everything. And we moved to Florida. And I know that y'all know, a teen, a child can get rebellious. Why? Because what does the world offer the teens? Nothing but trouble. Okay? So, throughout the years we would go to church and as I got older, I would see my brothers, my cousins, friends, everybody just drinking away. Women all over the place beer, whatever you want, it was there. And I would see it, I was like, man, you know what? They look cool, man. They look cool, why, why? What if I were to do something like that? What would that do for me? Well, when we were in Florida, after that we moved to Florida, and I saw a bottle, I don't remember what it was. I was like, man, that was pretty good. I was, I was 13 at the time. 13 years old and the devil thought he was going to take me forever. But you know what? When I saw that bottle, man, my, my mouth started watering like when you see something good or not. Well, I like, was like, you know what? I'm going to take a sip. What's it going to do? 13 years old, I took a sip. It was vodka. Man, you know what? When I took that sip, it grabbed a hold of me. And at 13, I was like, it tasted so good. And then I saw a little carton of cigarettes, which I'm like, well, you know, it's just a smoke. What can I do? So I puffed. And I got hooked on it. I love the alcohol, and I love the, just the, the feeling of it. When we came back <clears throat> to Kennedy, my brother, like I said, they were all party, women all over the place, and I'm like, man, you know what? I want to be cool like you. 13 years old, 14, 15, 16, my teenagers. So what I do, let me have some, man. My older brother, <laughs> let me have some of that stuff. I started and I started to, you know what, finally I was hoping. I got hooked on it and then I became an alcoholic because after school, there we go, buying beer 18 packs after 18 packs after 18 packs. And one day after, well, as soon as summer came on, there we go, all summer long, day and night, man, day and night. But one thing that stopped it, power and prayer. Somebody out there was praying for me. You know what, Lord, protect that child. Look at the trouble he's in. Look what he's doing. Look at his lifestyle. A teen sleeping with women, drunk, doped up, whatever. 
That's not, that's what the, the devil offers these teens. Because they're not, they're not receiving that love, that compassion that they need. They're going, their parents are going through divorce. They're just seeing so much stuff in this world and they want it. And the devil sure is taking them in. So I enjoyed it. And by someone praying for me, thank God, no more rebellion. I got hit. In 1998, I was 18, 19, somewhere like that. I accepted the Lord. And he delivered me. He cleansed me. And I say there's power in prayer because the more I got into the Lord, I got more intimate. We bonded together. And when you can come to the Lord and bond and, and just open yourself to Him, He'll do whatever you want in His name. And um, thank God, throughout those years I was drunk and whatever, anything could happen. AIDS, remember AIDS is out there? Hepatitis, whatever. Liver or alcohol damage. But thank God, power and prayer that someone was covering, covering me with, none of that never touched me. Because the Lord had a calling in my life, like He's got a calling in yours. And I just want to say, if He did that for me, there's nothing impossible for, for Him. If He changed my life overnight, drinking all these years and everything, overnight, just like quit, He can do the same for you. <clears throat> you might be troubled. You might be hurting. You might be in bondage, messed up. You might be addicted to something, a drug or alcohol, women, whatever. There's a way out. If he put me out, he can do the same for you. Why? Because his love, his compassion is so big. Much greater than the, the, than the hate, hatred of Satan. His power, his peace can come in and give you the power to overcome. To take on the world because he's in you. The more you pray, like tonight, the, the title of this prayer, prayer, prayer. The more you pray, the closer you get to the Lord. The closer you get to the Lord, now you just get that bondage where He covers us. He takes us under His wing and He protects us. And I hated a lot of people because of, of my life. My parents went through a divorce. And you know what? That hurts. But thank God for His grace that we never did nothing stupid. Why? Because we were covered. Someone was covering me in prayer. And there's power where His love dwells. Hatred's got to go. And the way I hated people, now I love. By the blood of Christ. And I've seen what the Lord can do. So I encourage you. Pray. Find that intimate place with you and the Lord. Because He's there. He's waiting with open arms. And His love is so great that He's willing to take anybody in. No matter if you're the worst alcoholic, drug addict, doesn't matter. He died for you and for me. If we weren't worth nothing, He wouldn't have died. But why did He die? Because we're worth tons and millions to Him. We're His children. If it wasn't for Him, like Sister said, I wouldn't be here tonight. Where would I be? Who knows? And who knows, who, who believes the Lord can heal? There's healing in the name of Jesus. You know, don't know, there's power in the blood of the Lamb. When He died, He shed His blood on that cross because He knew in the future 
My children are going to need my blood. There's going to be so much that's going to pull them down. They're going to need me. If I die on the cross, I will open the doorway to heaven for them. I will open the doorway to get them out of hell where they, where, where we go through, hell. But thank God for power when you pray. They shall come to pass. Because that's His promise. And I know, I want to testify that there's power in prayer. My uncle, we had three, three times, four times, he went flatline, completely gone, out of this world. But what happened? A lot of us got together and we prayed. Power and prayer. Look where he's at. Satan tried. But remember, greater is, in, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. By his 39 stripes we're healed. Jesus overcame death when he rose the third day and came out of the tomb. By him, by Satan trying to take his life, that's what the Lord said. You know what? Enough is enough. This is my son. I intervene for him. I intercede for him. And look where he's at. Look at Mikey. Mikey went through something. Why? How am I? Satan tried to take him as well. But by the grace of God, you know what? Look where he's at. Look where he sits. And I'm sure there's a lot of us here. You know what? You might be praying for something. I encourage you, continue. Continue to pray. It might not happen now, but remember his promises. What you ask, you shall receive. Ask in my name, and you shall see it happen. So whatever you're praying for, continue. Continue. And um, I want to say, if any of you need prayer tonight, we're here. We love you. As he loved us and pulled us out of the pits of hell, we have to do the same and love you. We love you guys, man. We're here for y'all. If there's anything you need, <clears throat> you know what? I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. Come and we'll, we'll lay hands on you. We'll pray for you. We'll pray with you. Because if God pulled them out of the death of the bed of death, what, what can he do? If Jesus died and rose, that's power, man. That's power. And he says in his word, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the miracles he did yesterday when he walked the world, he'll do the same today and he's going to do the same tomorrow. By his grace, by his blood, by his word. Believe. Trust in the Lord. One day I was working here at John Deere and I fell off a trailer. I went to the doctor and they were like, oh, you just fractured three ribs. Three ribs, just so you can go back, light duty, go sleep, do whatever you can. Man, it hurt. Bro, it hurt, man. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, you know what? I need something else. I went to Floresville. Went to the doctor over there. Four broken ribs. I was like, man, Lord, what's going on, man? I serve you. But you know what? He did it to open my eyes that he can do all things. Those four, those four broken ribs I lived with for nah, about a week, not even maybe. When the Lord healed my broken ribs instantly within seconds. Power and prayer. As long as you believe, he says, just have faith, size of a mustard seed. How big is a mustard seed? That's tiny. 
plek of leave. That's all the faith you need. That can move a huge mountain. And we have that faith. That's why they're here. That's why my ribs are healed. That's why I'm standing here. Because he changed, delivered, set free, and changed my life for this day, for you, for him. Power in prayer. Power in the name of Jesus. You might be going through a problem, a situation. There's no greater problem than our Lord. So whatever, He's here. He's here for you. He died for you. So at the end of the service, if you need prayer, just remember power and prayer. Well, there are two or more gathered in my name, I am in the midst. So he's right here in the middle of us. He's ready to heal, feel, and touch your life. Change your life. It's all up to you. How much do you want to do? And I believe with all my heart that there was somebody out there praying for us, praying for you. As we pray for this evening. If we wouldn't have prayed and believed, do I think we'd be here right now? Probably not. And the devil came, did he not? He tried to destroy this evening. He tried to pull apart. Why? Because the devil hates love. Remember that. He hates love. And the devil's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. If he would have killed me and destroyed me, I wouldn't be here. But by prayer and by the grace of God, look where we're at. Look where we stand this day. All right? We love y'all. And I encourage you, keep praying. Keep believing. Those miracles you're asking for, they're going to come. There's nothing, nothing impossible for our Lord Jesus Christ. Whether it be sickness, <clears throat> disease, pain, whatever it is you're going through, He's right here, ready to heal, to restore. And I want to say another thing. I can testify that there's power in prayer to remember. My mom and my dad divorced when I was little. We were young. So many years praying, praying, praying. Lord, I saw him with different ladies. I saw her with different men. I'm like, this can't be, man. This can't be. Devil, you know what? Get. You're trying to destroy my family. But power and prayer. Thank you, Lord. After 27 years, of being divorced. We prayed and they got back together. September 21st, they're going to tie the knot. And we believe what my mom's expecting. Power and prayer. As long as you pray, remember, when you pray, he says, be specific. Be specific in what you ask. And he will grant your prayer. Speak with your tongue as if it's already there. Believe by faith and you will see what will happen. I've been praying, but did I know that the Lord was actually going to bring them back? I didn't know. But by faith, believing in Him, knowing that there's nothing impossible for Him, September 21st, they will reunite. That's how great our God is. He wants to do things for you. Ask. There's many things He's got for you. Ask and you shall receive. Anything you need, He's there. He's there. Waiting with open arms. Once again, we want to thank you for coming out.
Yeah, we're gonna make an altar call after everything's done, after everybody's testified. Because I know and I believe that the Lord's gonna do something tonight. Because the devil tried to pull it apart. The devil tried. He tried hard, didn't he, bro? And when, if it wasn't God's will, why would the devil try to stop it? But, like I said, the devil hates love. And he knew there was going to be a lot of love here. Excuse me. He knew there was going to be a lot of peace. But he tried to stop it. But thank you, Lord, for prayer. Look what's going on tonight. And you don't see much people, but you know what? He had this planned out. Who he needed here, who he wanted to do something for tonight, you're here. Y'all didn't come for nothing. Y'all didn't come in vain. You came because he's got purpose for you. He's got a plan for you. If he took me out of alcohol, women, and all that, he wouldn't have handled it for me. But because he's got a plan, look where you're standing. Look where you're at. And he wants to touch. He wants to feel life. He wants to feel that emptiness that's been there for so long. As long as you open up to him, he'll come in and let you free. It's all up to you. But tonight I encourage you. What he did for my sister, what he did for me, and he did for my brother. We're no better than you. We're all his children. He'll do it for you. I encourage you, don't give up. I don't know, I just feel a lot of you are praying for something. You're believing for something. And the devil's probably been attacking, discouraging. Continue. When Jesus walked to the cross, he never gave up. Because he knew. So I encourage you, don't give up. Continue fighting. The stronger the devil comes, the stronger get in with the Lord. He's there. I'm going to tell you again, there's purpose for you. There's a plan for each and every one of you. All right. So remember, we're here. We love y'all. Thank y'all. God bless. It's not good to hear. And I think I had to draw here to hear everything that's going on, Scott. All the testimony that we have, the love of God, the love for y'all. That's why we're here tonight. And I do believe that there's people here tonight that need to hear this word. That need to be told what it is to be loved by God. To be shown, to be whole, held by Him. Like I said earlier, there's four people that I know here right now. That by God, God's gracious love sitting here. My control, you're one of them. And I'm thank you. Here. I got two cousins back here that drove in from Dallas, Texas. And y'all gonna forgive me, I'm real submittal to the Lord's touch. And I got two cousins here that should be dead right now. One of them was dead for four and a half hours, sitting on the side of the road with the rest of the dead people, which were her family. And all of a sudden, she arose, just like God did on the third day. She got up and started walking. And the guy that was there sitting there, painted, faded, and passed out, turned white. He didn't know what was happening. But thank God she's here, right? My other cousin. Her tragic accident. She lost a brother-in-law. They were both electrocuted. Yeah, she lost her brother-in-law, but she's here today to speak and see here and listen to what God's word is all about. Am I right? We all gotta go through something in order for us to understand what God's doing in our lives. We're not here for nothing, man. We got Mr. Four Time Liner over there. We got Jojo Castillo, we got Joe Robles, we got Melissa Arizona. That's my wife, y'all. I almost didn't have her here either. See, what happened was, 
She got real sick. And she looked like a skeleton with nothing but skin on her. She had jaundice. Everybody thought she had some kind of hepatitis, acute, whether it be cirrhosis of the liver. Nobody knew what was wrong with her. But let me start this little story off back in the day. See, what y'all don't know is I didn't grow up with a mom and dad. And I knew, I didn't know until just a few years ago that I grew up with God showing me, not knowing what was really happening, not ever knowing who was guiding me, and not listening to his word. Nobody's growing all together. And that had a big old effect in my life. And when I met Melissa, it was just something else. But before I met Melissa, the only person that I had in my life was my stepfather. And he died in 1988. And I went cursing God. I cursed him for everything, man. I cursed him for everything that he did in my life that was wrong. But actually, it was me doing wrong while he was trying to steer me right. And then my wife gets sick. There's my daughter right there. It's a hard thing one thing. But not one doctor, not one pill, not one medicine, not nothing. Only the grace of God, and then by God, through God, for God, and the power of prayer brought her back. If y'all know anything about your liver, you know that it's the only thing in your body that doesn't regenerate itself. Her first biopsy was trashed out, black, bruised, scarred. A year later, her second biopsy, a brand new liver. Now that wasn't something we just went and bought at Walmart. So we know that by the power of prayer, we have miracles that happen every day. We have miracles and love that God sends to us regardless of the situation we're in. All we have to do is ask. And the night that my wife was healed, for the first time in my life after I cursed God, I asked God to be with me again. I said, man, I don't ask you for much. As a matter of fact, the last few years, I ain't asked you for nothing. I said, but tonight, hear my prayers. Feel my heart. Listen to what I ask for. I said, heal my wife. She's got two kids and a husband to love her. And we didn't know we were there. But it eventually came out to be. And we saw it all day long. Every time we had to go to the doctor for a whole year straight, every week. On Monday, all time, every time, and they were amazed. And her doctor was like, "Well, what are you doing? How are you doing it?" By the praise, the glory of God, that child was done. Just like my uncle Mike. By the prayer of God, like my two cousins back here. By the prayer of God, see what well, we don't understand is we're all afforded the same opportunity in life to do what we do. It's up to us to make the proper choices in life. It's up to us to make things right for ourselves, for our children, and for this, whatever we have. If, if there's something in your life right now that, that's stopping you from understanding what God is, then try, stop trying to understand that problem. Because that problem is small compared to our God. Our God is bigger than anything that's out of here. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is confront it with our, with our Lord Jesus Christ. God says, through me, I, you can do everything possible. Am I right, brother? That's what God says, man. So why do we struggle every day? Why do we sit here in pain and agony or just be miserable knowing that the love of God can cure us and heal us and, and do everything for us if we just ask for it? Why? Because we don't believe. Our faith isn't strong. And we're afraid of what he's going to say, or he's going to say, or she's going to say. We're afraid of what people are going to say. Well, God says, deny me in front of your friends. And I'll deny you in front of my father. And if that's what you want, then you need that kind of life. You need it. But you know what? Take heed to his word every day because he talks to you every day. Every time your heart feels a little bit of passion, every time your heart feels a little bit of this, that, that's God telling you, listen to what I'm saying to you. That's God saying, do my work. That's God saying, here I am. Why don't you ask me for help? And it's 
understand me. Oh, let me call my best friend Bobby. Bobby sitting at the bar drinking throw back no love. But that's the advice we're going on because that's how we are as people. We're vulnerable to this stuff, man. But God says don't be. God says ask on me. And I'll give you everything. You, I'll give you the desires of your heart. All you have to do is believe. Yeah. Guess what? I started believing. And when I started believing again, I think we started playing country music backwards because I got my house. I got my car. I got my kids, I got my wife back. I started believing. I'm going to stay believing because that's where it's at. I moved to Kitty, Texas in January. And the doors that where I were at, where we were at, were closed. Right, baby? God has opened so many doors for us, man. So when he says, if I close one door and open another for you, walk through that door. And when he knocks on your heart, answer it. Because you don't ever know what's going to happen. Man, that $20 bill that you lost last week and you need to pay the gas like with to buy a baby some food or pampers, I turn into 20 grand. And God says, I will give you the desires of your heart. All you have to do is cast the cares upon me, and I will do exactly what you need. But do his work as well. Everybody here. Who's better than who? Nobody, man. Ain't nobody here better than the next person next to you. All we do is sit and judge. But you don't realize that tomorrow, if we die, when we have to answer it, that that book of life has everything that we've done. Everything. I don't care from the smallest to the biggest side. From the smallest to the biggest thing we've done bad. It has everything, and we have to be accountable by God for everything that we do. So what makes you better than the next person? Absolutely nothing, man. You know, we got the Ten Commandments. And God says, yeah, don't have no other God before me. I never will. But he also said one last commandment. We just didn't put it with the Ten Commandments because it would be called the 11th Commandment. Everybody would be crazy. But God's last commandment was to love one another. So why don't we? Why do we have to sit here and wonder why that person doesn't like me or why this girl's talking about me or why this man over here wants to shoot me or whatever? We should be. And not only that, but that person that you're sitting there judging or making fun of or talking bad about, who to say that person isn't God said? Do you know what that person's been through that day? What if that person's homeless? What if that person hasn't eaten? What if that person just lost his family? What if that person just found his family and doesn't want them? That's a hard deal right there, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I found my family. And I go through a lot of struggles. I'm not saying that I'm the only one, because I've heard stories, man, that would make me cry just because they hurt so bad. But I will tell you this. Everything that we go through, we go through for a reason. God has us here. Everything that happens to us, God's made it. He's already, the plan's already been made. We're, we're fighting a battle that's already been won. We just don't know it. But what we don't do is ask God to help us and heal us and take care of us. And love us and show us exactly what we need to do in order for us to be right by God. That's what we don't do. You know, everybody sits here. Believe me, I'm, I'll be the first to tell you. I'm not perfect by far, and I'll be the first one to judge sometimes. But like that guy stabbed me inside my head and said, Well, we you think you are. I'm your dad. Sure and that brings me back to the world. I got my wife. She stabbed me inside the head all the time. What's wrong with you, boy? She did it this morning. The devil was trying to get me, boy. I'm about to throw a taco at some lady. But my wife was there, and she said, what is wrong with you, Rudy? And I had to look at her and say, I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with you. But I'm going to fix it right now. And I fixed it. God almost took my whole life away when he told her when she got sick. 
And it showed me where I needed to be from day one. I got a brother here from, from Big Spring, Texas, and he knows a little bit of my story. He's actually one of the guys who helped me get back to God. I had 316 on my truck one day, on my trailer. I was running back to the truck for a company called Rodney. And he says, you don't know nothing about 316. Well, I thought I was going to beat him up with the Bible. Well, it turns out that he beat me up with just the words that God gave him that day. And he said, man, it's good to see another person in Christ driving trucks like I did. He said, it's good to see another man in the oil field doing God's work. I said, I'm not doing God's work. I know God. I said, I know God. I can tell you what God's doing. I can tell you what he wants to do. I can tell you where he's at. But, did I listen to it myself? I didn't do that. No. And I was going to go back to doing things that I should have never been doing all my life. But I thank this man here and I thank God for putting it in front of me because you know what, without him, I would have never been able to do what I am now. I would have never been able to come home to my children and my wife. I would have never been able to get straight with my son. I would have never been able to get straight with my daughter who I love so very much. And most of all, I would have never been able to be with my wife right now. And I just thank God for it every day. And you can get thank God for it. You should be the same thing. God's blessed you. Is that the no, God knows. We don't know. God knows. It's us who steer wrong. God ain't lost, man. We are. Look at yourself in the morning when you wake up. You can't even find your way to the restroom. That's how lost we are. I'll tell you what. If you want to be balanced now, we can do that for you. And it's hard for people to die. We're not no. We're the people that do God's work. That's what we are, man. Because if you only knew where I come from, that'll come later on. But if you knew where I come from to where I am now, then you would be amazed to walk in my shoes today. My Aunt Dora's right over there. That's her. She'll tell you. My Uncle Mike's right there. Hey, remember that time I ran from the law field, Mike, and didn't your house? Yeah. I did that for many years. But you know what? God's good. God loves us all. Yeah. And He's going to continue to love us. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is open our hearts to Him. Open our minds to Him. And everything that you think that's bad in life, that's happening right now, God will take away. All you have to do is ask and fix it. Yeah. Don't be afraid, man. I was afraid. And my pastor kept telling me, boy, you're going to die. I said, I ain't going to God, did he said, well, I mean, that's something you just going to have to choose, really. I said, look, man, I'm not going to give my life to God so I can die. And I promise you, I felt that I was going to die. Well, guess what? I did die. My old me died. The new you, the new me is what you see right now. And I thank God for it every day. Because you know what? I humble myself in front of the Lord every time. And you know what? We think that we're men. And I did two and a half years in penitentiary, bro, riding with the, with the group that I probably should never go with. And I'm walking by myself today, you know what I'm saying? And that's okay because God's walking by. I can't even say that it's me against the world anymore because God's got my back. You know that? I walk every day worry free. I walk every day worry free. What is it called? Too blessed to be stressed? But, uh,. We're okay. We're good. We're going to be this again. We're going to have another prayer tomorrow. And we're going to have them around surrounding counties too so everybody can know what the word of the Lord is. But see, what everybody, what everybody's doing tonight is, is missing out on the word. That's what they're doing. They think they're too good for God. But guess what? When, God, when time comes and God says, where were you on August 31st at 7 o'clock? Man, God, I was too good for you that night. Gosh dang, boy, I'm too good for you now. God, see you later. That's what's going to happen. Until that person decides to repent, ask God for forgiveness. And then they're going to be forgiven. Because God says, I will forgive you seven times seven times seven times seven. And when you fall and you're afraid to get back up, don't be afraid. It's God's gracious love that lets you get back up. Yeah, don't y'all know? God walked on water, and he'll let you walk on water if you believe. All you got to do is ask. All you got to do is put your head and mind into your heart. 
So all that trash away, bro. That's why you brush things, really. Because y'all don't throw the trash away. Let the past be in the past because it's already gone. The future is yet to come, but today's a present. God gave us that. We don't listen to the future. No, we don't. But guess what, man? I'm here today because God loves us all. And I love my Lord Jesus Christ. Two years ago, I was just going through the motion and not knowing what was happening. But I know now what's happening. I see it every day. I live it every day. And I'm not perfect, man. Don't get me wrong. Because I have to, boy, I've got to ask God every day for forgiveness. Because I'm not perfect. Because I live the way I live. I also got God right here. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. There's another saying that says, if you got, what is it saying? If God is for you, who can be against you? You know what, man? Next time you see one of your enemies, you say that. If God is for me, but God, but have God in your heart when you say it. If God is for me, who can be against me? And when you wake up tomorrow morning to go to bed tonight, man, talk to me. Thank you for what happened. Even for all the troubles that you go through, thank you. It's there for a reason. All the troubles you go through are there for a reason. Thank you. And in the morning when you wake up, thank him again because you gave me a new day. My name is Rudy Ochoa. God saved me and he can save you. Afterwards, if y'all need some prayer, I want to ask a few questions. We're more than welcome to answer, and we're more than welcome to pray. I want to thank y'all for coming now. I'm going to invite Mr. Joe Robles to come talk for us now. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm nervous. But the brother called me and he said that he wanted me to tell y'all my testimony. My testimony was I was a drunk. I smoked weed. And uh, I didn't know God. I thought I knew God, but not like I know him now. I didn't know you could talk to him. I didn't know you could say, God, I need help. I thought... All you had to do was go to church, do good deeds, and just shoot for hope you go to heaven. But one night I was throwing a party, and my mom calls me, and she says, I need you to come over here. Your Theo's here, and uh, I need you to come say hi. I said, Mom. I'm having a party. I said, I can't, I, I live about, uh, I got my own house now. I can't just stop and go over there. She goes, I'm throwing a party. We're, you know, we're having a good time. And she's like, well, you need to come say hi. I said, I'll, I'll be over there in a little while. Okay. So the next thing you know, the party was dying down. Uh, my sweater was there, he was already wasted. Like, hey, well, all right, we'll see you go home. Yeah. So he started going home. And I said, hey, my mom wants us to go over there. So we, I took the party over there. And when I got over there, I saw my brother-in-law, he was just sitting up against his car and drinking a beer. And there was a lot of cars on trip down, because even on my mom's side, she has preachers. And they were, they were there, and I was like, man. And I, I passed by the window, and my sister was there, like, hey, wait. Like, help me, help me. I'm like, what is going on in there? I said, I, I, I went to my brother-in-law. I asked him, I said, what, what's happening? He says, oh, they're praying inside. I'm like, oh, well, I don't want to go in there. I'm going to stay out here with you. He started drinking a beer. And next thing you know, I don't think we even got to finish the beer. And they still all started coming out of the house. And I was like, hey, I saw my, my primo. Since we were little, we were, we were brought up together. I saw him there, his wife, and my tío, my tía, my other tío and tía. And I mean, this all the ones that knew the word of God. And when I, I know 
when they know the word of God, they would come over, you know, and not like, hey, hi, Theo, hi, Tia, and then, hey, see you later, I gotta go, because I know what y'all gonna do. <laughs> I don't wanna be around that. At least I didn't think I did. But you know what? That day, that night, God changed my life. Because I asked my, my primo, I haven't seen him in a while, and I said, wait, you know what? How you doing? I said, hey, what's up? Good to see you. He's like, hey, gotta go. I'm like, man, I just brought my party over here, and now you're leaving? I said, what, what's, where are you going? He said, well, we're going to a revival. I'm like, uh, what's the revival? He's like, it's church. I'm like, oh, hey, you know what? Okay, I, I can do an hour. I, I'll sit by him, I'll talk to him, we'll catch up on old times. You know, that's what I was thinking. And my wife said, hey, you can't go. I'm like, why not? And she's like, you know what you've been doing? You know, you've been smoking. I'm like, hey, I feel all right. She's like, no, and my uncle heard us, and he's like, what's wrong? I said, Theo, can I go over to church? He's like, do you know what you're doing? I said, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I know. <laughs> He's like, okay, go ahead. So next thing I know, I said, all right, we're going to get in the van. I said, hey, wait a minute, let me go put my beer up. I remember, all I remember is going inside, putting my beer on the table and says, wait right there. I'll be back for you. I didn't want to lose my beer. Because I'm going to go catch up with old times with my primo. I'm going to go find out what he's been up to. So that day, that day we got in, we took off and my primo and my prima, they were talking to me. Everything they were saying was just going over my head. I didn't even know. I was just glad I was there. I said, hey, I'm going to church. We're going to catch up. But you know what? God had other plans. God says, no. Is now he says you know what I, I want you I didn't know you could talk to God I didn't know you could just say hey have a conversation I didn't know you could do that and uh, what tripped me out is when we we're getting close to the church I could hear the music two blocks away and I was like whoa like, what kind of church is this and we walked in, I got nervous. And we walked in and I saw a lot of people with their hands up. I like, oh man, I said, uh, I don't know. I, I've never been to a church like this. The only thing I've seen on TV, devil worshipers raising their hands on TV and the things I was like, what did I get myself into? I thought I was with devil worshipers. I, I was just nervous. But I didn't know what was happening. And my primo, I was going to sit by him. And he went all the way to the front. I'm like, dude, I don't see him in the front. I said, people in the front, they'll call you. I said, nah, I don't think so. So I sat in the back, bro. I, I sat in the back. My, and my, my wife, my brother-in-law, my sister. My mom and dad, and then in the, in the front there was a a pastor. He was a lowrider. He had a suit suit on, and I was super now like, what kind of father is this? And <laughs> a zoot suit. I like, I've never been to a church like this. And he, he had a zoot suit on, and he was telling them how he has been shot, he's been left for dead, but God had a purpose for him. And a year before I got saved, my primo came and he says, Joe, I was drinking and, and I would hide my beard too. He would leave. He says, Joe, if you ever want to ask God a question, he says, ask him with your heart and tell him. And after you tell him, he says, open the Bible. And the first thing you see, that's what he's telling me. So that night, uh, that's all I could remember. I said, I need to go home. Because I got married and they gave me a Bible. So I wanted to go check it out. And then next thing you know, the preacher.
picture says you, because I had darker glasses back then, they were all dark. You're in the dark glasses, come to the front. And I was like, no, no. So I don't think so. And he started preaching again. Then later he's like, you, in the dark glasses, come to the front. And I'm like, no. I said, I don't think so. And he would pray again. And, and then the third time, the third time I, I tripped out, he's like, you, in the dark glasses, come to the front. And I was like, no, nah, no. Nah. The usher came and he's like, hey, uh, they're talking to you. Like, hey, I like, get away from me. <laughs> I like, buddy, we will get it on. <laughs> because I didn't know what was happening. I didn't understand what was going on. I went for the wrong reasons, but yet God was showing me. And next thing you know, because I remember my Theo said, do you know what you're doing? And when I answered, I said, yes, I do. So when I went, I really didn't know, but I know that I wanted God. I know I needed to change my life. I'd be drinking that I, I, the people I would party with, next thing you know, I would fall asleep and I was on sleep on the chair. And when I woke up, everybody was gone. I was like, what kind of life is that? I'm getting tired of this life. I'm getting tired of drinking, smoking. To me, it was like, you know what? 90% work and 10% play. Amen. You do what you want, you, you, you work for it, you earned it, you, you know what? Go for it. That's the way I used to think. But you know what? That night, I tripped out. I looked at my brother-in-law and he looked at me and he thought that I wanted to go to the front. I don't know what he was thinking. Because <laughs> he turned around, my sister turned around, everybody did, and they all left. I was the only one there on that rope. I'm like, no, I'm not going. They were falling down and I'm like, well, I still don't understand what's going on. But it was the presence of God that was touching them and they were falling. And I was like, well, that's interesting. But I said that night, I said, God, you know, if you want me, you want me to follow you, I want to see a miracle tonight. Yeah. Tonight, I want to see a miracle. I want to, I don't know what, I didn't want to see a miracle. I just want to know it's a miracle. And I asked him something else, but I can't remember. But I remember, you know what? I want to see a miracle because I know that was the hard one. And that night, nothing happened. That night, I, I, I don't remember going home. I don't remember the ride home. All I remember was walking into my room. I don't remember if I talked to my primo or nothing. All I remember was walking in and looking for my Bible. And when I found my Bible, I said, okay, God, I got my Bible. I said, I asked you a question. I said, tonight I asked you uh, for something. I can't remember what it was. And you know what? I opened the Bible and he answered that like, whoa. I said, nah, that's a coincidence. That's all it is. It's a coincidence. And I said, okay, okay, God. This is the first time I ever talked to God in my room. And I said, okay, God, you know what? I asked you for a miracle. How come it didn't happen? And I said, okay, what do you got to say for that? So I opened the Bible and the next thing I saw was said, you do not need a miracle to believe in me. That night, I kneeled down, I gave my life to God, I said, God, I hear you. I understand. I'm not sure, but I understand that you hear me and that I can talk to you and that I can say, if I have a problem, you'll help me. I don't understand, but there was a love, there was a hunger. I needed to know. I needed to know my God. I needed to know what the word said. I needed to, I needed to know where I wouldn't step over the line. Because I, I thought, you know, once you step over that line, God's going to 
That's it. But you know his grace and his love. No telling how many times we pass that line, but yet God gives us grace. God said gives us mercy and says, I'm still here. He says, come on, come on. You still have a chance. As long as you have breath, as long as you have life, you have a chance. God says, come. Don't worry about what he says or what she says. It says, by the blood of the Lamb and your testimony. That's all you need to start. That's all you need to start talking because God says, I'll give you the rest. You just tell them what I did for you. And when you start doing that, you'll be like, oh, okay. All right, God. Okay. Hmm. Like, what? Are you sure? Like, I'm not sure. Sometimes I... I'm not really, I don't really know, but I know that if I keep taking that step forward, that I keep, even if it's a baby step, and I keep walking forward, you know what? God will direct me into the path that I need to go. God will take me. If I go off the, off the line, he'll direct me back to where I need to be. In the process, I will learn. Like I tell my son, you can learn from me, or you can let me learn the hard way. Because if God shows you, you will remember. If God shows you, you won't forget. But you know what? God gave us older to teach the younger. And say, look, the mistakes you've done, teach the younger. Let them know that they don't have to go through it. But the enemy's mad, he's, he's like, you know what? We're made in God's image. In God's image, we're made in his image. He wants to destroy anything that's in God's image. And if he can keep you from the word of God, if he can keep you where you can't build your foundation, because your foundation needs to be strong. Your foundation needs to, you need to know where you can stand. That when something comes against you, when the enemy comes against you, then you'll know that, hey, no, no, no. You know what? Brother, I need prayer. Sister, I need prayer. I know how to fight back. I'm not going to take it down, standing, laying down. A lot of times we fall down and the enemy just starts kicking us and kicking us. But we always have a choice. We always have a choice. We can get back up and we can start walking. We say, I messed up, Lord. Or, you know what? I don't understand. But you know what? I'm walking forward because I'm trusting in you. Because you always make a way out. You always say that, you know what? No matter what you do, he will make a way out. The enemy will probably try to trap you. The enemy will try to keep you down. But as soon as you learn the word and put it in your heart, you know what? The enemy starts getting to know your name. He starts getting scared because you're going to teach others. And when you teach others, others are going to grow. Others are going to stand strong. Others are going to be helping, fighting the battle. The purpose of why we're here, the purpose of getting God's will done. Each and every one of us have a purpose. Well, I'm already old. Well, I'm already, I'm too young. You know what? If you look a lot of, in the Bible, there were old people that God used a lot. Because of their knowledge and the things they've gone through. And he used a lot of young people. But you know what? As long as you're able, as long as you're willing, God says, I will use you. So all we can do is just keep going forth. I ask God. I like well, the brother wanted me to tell my testimony. I said, okay. I'll tell my testimony. And I asked God, I said, God, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? And he gave me joy. He 
gave me Joel in, in Joel's time a, a swarm of locusts came and it ate up everything they said it was so thick the locusts that it was so bad that I mean it was a dark cloud and when it got to you you couldn't see the sun no more it was so bad that I mean everything was being eaten up and he says tell your children and let your children tell to their children and let their children to the next generation tell them tell them everything tell them what they need to know I can give you an example you know because how many of our fathers and their fathers have told us about God they might have told us a little bit oh no just like a church like oh you just be quiet that's why mm. that's all that's all you need to know but we didn't know why we didn't know what we're supposed to do is say and we teach our kids hey well you just be quiet that's all you need to know mm. they're not really learning much I can give you an example for this like this lady This lady, uh, she would cook a ham, and it was a beautiful ham, and everybody was like, man, you cook the best ham ever. Like, how do you do it? I said, well, it's been passed down from generation to generation. Well, oh, that's cool, well, who taught you? I said, my mom. Well, who taught your mom? My mom taught my, my mom, my mom down from generation. There was four, five generations and they were still alive. They said, well, Mom, why do you cook the ham half of it and then the other half later? They're like, well, I don't know. That's how my mom did it. <laughs> Let's call my mom. She called mom, Mom, why do we cook the ham? You know, half muscle and then the other half. She's like, well, I don't know. Uh, let's ask grandma so they call grandma and grandmas it just went like that to the fifth generation she said me huh back then we cut the ham in half because our oven was small and the ham wouldn't fit <laughs> so we had to cook half and then we cook the other half later but that's the way I tell your mom and I guess she got a bigger oven I don't know why she does it that way but that's the way they were talk. I gotta know my mom. I was already 19 or 20, maybe 21. I was working in Houston and uh, I had a headache. And this guy, he's like, hey, you want an aspirin? I was like, no. I, I said, I just ate a bologna sandwich. He's like, and? What's wrong with that? So I just ate a bologna sandwich. I can't, I can't eat, uh, eat aspirin. He's like, well, that's weird. Why? Well, I don't know, but my mom told me. And I started thinking, you know, that does sound weird. I said, I'm call my mom. I called my mom that night and said, Mom, how come I can't eat a sandwich and then, you know, drink aspirin? She goes, well, Mimo, when you were young, you had just ate a bologna sandwich. And when I touched you, you had a, a fever. So I gave you aspirins and then you, you went into promotions. I said, okay. I said, mom, did you ever think that the time you gave me the aspirin was too late? <laughs> you know what I mean? And she's like, well, because that happened, she got scared and she didn't want it to happen again. So she's like, I'll tell him this. She wanted to make sure that I wouldn't get hurt or I went into commotion. She didn't know if that's what did it. But she knows that's what she gave me at the time. A lot of times we try to tell our own children this is something we've gone through. But you know what? All we got to do is look for the Word of God and see what He tells us. And once we get that into our heart, you know what? The enemy is going to attack. But 
like you say, if God is for us, who can be against us? No one. If you can see that into your heart, no matter how the enemy comes, no matter what he does, you know what, you're able to take that step. And when you can't take that step forward no more, that's when you just get down and pray and say, God, or tell the brother or the sister says, I need prayer. Because prayer is powerful, like the brother said, it is powerful. You can be here and someone can get healed somewhere else. I want to let you know, my sister was praying for our whole family for five years. I remember one time we would take my mom to Houston because of some nerves on her brain and stuff. She goes, Joe, let's go to the church and we'll pray. Joe, we'll do I said, you know what? That's good for you. I don't need it. I feel bad for my sister because she went through a lot. Because none of us were saved, but she was. But she was there praying for us every day for five years. For five years, and that day that I got saved, my dad got saved, my mom got saved, my, my wife, my other sister, and her, her husband, my brother, and his wife. The whole family, like that, got saved because of prayer. I didn't know she was praying until later. She told me. But you know what? It is awesome. Because now, I understand what she was trying to tell me then. But yet, I was like, you know, that's good for you, not for me. Until I got saved, I said, you know what, let's go break me. When my tias and tios come, I'm like, hey, let's get around the table. Let's, I want to see what God's doing on that side of the earth or that world. I want to see what God's doing here in San Antonio. I want to see what God's doing in the next city. When we get together and start talking. Because God is doing something everywhere. Amen. Not in just Big Spring, not in just San Antonio or Houston. Everywhere. He loves us all. Amen. And He wants to encourage us. Fight the good fight. So, I want to thank you, everyone that came, but you know what, like I say, get to know him, get to know God, know what you can do, know that what gifts God's got in store for us are his blessings, because he does have something for each and every one of us, but it's up to us to keep on taking that step forward taking that step and learning. I'm learning more and more. And I, I ask God, I say, you know what, thank you. But just remember, when you go talk to somebody, just remember, by the blood of the Lamb and your testimony, that's all you need. God will give you the rest. As you learn and read the Word of God, He'll fill your heart. What you don't remember, you know what, it'll come. You'll remember later. When you need it, God will show you and teach you. Thank you, Lord. We praise and we worship. We give you all the glory, Lord. Lord, I just thank you. Thank you for tonight, Lord. I thank you for uh, here in Kennedy, Texas, Lord. I just speak a blessing, Lord. A blessing over Kennedy, all those that are here in the Word of God, Lord, that the light will just shine bright. That the light will shine into darkness, Lord. That wherever there is darkness, light will shine. Because a lot of people can't see. Because they get dull on the things they do. They say, well, you know what? If it's good enough for my father, it's good enough for me. Some people just go from generation to generation just what they've been taught. But never, ever doubted what their parents have told them. Don't get me wrong, they know a lot. But some things, you know what? 
they didn't understand. So they just tell you the best way they know how. A lot of our parents didn't get to go to school. A lot of our parents had to work. A lot of our parents were in the depression or, you know what? They did what they had to do. God was with them, even then. Even if they knew God or if they didn't. But to God it is awesome. And I just speak a blessing, blessing to everyone here. Lord, that you keep them safe as they go home. And uh, uh, just protect them and bless them, Lord. Lead them and guide them. May their ears, spiritual ears be open to hear your word that the Holy Ghost will lead them and guide them wherever they need to go. Where there is darkness. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for all what you will do tonight. I thank you for uh, your presence. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, such a blessing to have you. Brother Joe here with us, right? I hope all of you had a good evening, man. And, uh, we still got Jojo Castillo here, Joe Robles. Anybody needs some prayer for some healing? Just a prayer for your family, overall prayer whatsoever. It means a lot for, for all of y'all to be here with us tonight. It really does. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know, this man traveled six hours for us to pray for us tonight. Him and his family got here at 1.30 in the morning waking people up like they were they just doing what they were doing. You know? But they came six hours in order for us to bless us with their presence and speak yeah. God over us. Yeah. Connie K. Barnes. With that horrible life she lived, you know. God saved her. She did good things for us. And we're going to continue to do good things. We're not the kind of people that go away. Well, we know what God's about. I know who saved me. It wasn't Obama. It wasn't Reagan. It wasn't my mama. God saved me. Yeah. Yeah. I know where I'm at today because of God. And I thank Him for it every day. Just remember, man, when you want to start praising the Lord Jesus Christ, don't worry about what you're going to say. Worry about what your God's going to say. He has the last say in everything. What you think right now, it don't matter because He's going to change that. Y'all want to come up here and be healed, be prayed on? Just even feel the Lord's love. You're more than welcome to. Once again, oh, a lot of people, and I want to thank everybody that did, Worked hard, my Aunt Dora, Linda Hill, Walmart. They all worked on these cakes and cookies over here and cupcakes. So please, come and grab some and take them home. You're more than welcome. And we got a little bit more water left. We'll grab some water. But once again, I want to thank everybody for being here. We do love you, regardless of the situation. All y'all over there, brothers and sisters of Christ. All y'all over there, brothers and sisters of Christ. And I thank God for it. And I think, like I said, thank y'all for being here. Please give a big old hand to Connie, Joe, and Jojo, please, man. Thank you, Jojo. And just know that there is light in the dark. Right, little girl? In the dark, the light comes to me? I'm sure it's happened to everybody here at one time or another. But we thank you. I'm going to close with prayer, so. If you would, just bow your head, close your eyes. I'm going to ask everybody to clear their heads right now. Open their hearts. And just understand that what you hear might be for me, but it's God speaking, so receive it. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for the fellowship that we had tonight, Father God. And I just thank you for everything that you're going to do on our lives, Father God. Father God, we give you all the praise and glory, Father God. And we just thank you, dear Lord. We declare tonight a success in your name, Father God, because I felt your presence here, Father God. I hope you bless everybody that's here, Father God, that you do for them what you do for us, Father God. Father God, I ask that you just bestow your armor of your angels, Father God. Your warriors, Father God, that they be with everybody that's here tonight, Father God, that they not be defeated, Father God. That defeat not even come into their head, Father God, for the defeat is for Satan. We ride with the high king, the king of all kings, and we thank you for that, Father God. We thank you for everything that you're going to do in our lives, Father God. We thank you for all the blessings, Father God. We thank you for the healings, Father God, for all the riches, Father God, everything, Father we thank you for the bad times, the good times, the hard times, and the no times. 
But most of all, dear Lord, I thank you for all the love times that you give me. And I ask you to steal every heart here, Father God, with the love. Man, I know there's some stubborn people here. I'm one of them. Beat that heart down, bro. Show them who you are, Father God. Let them feel who you are. Just remember, there is nothing in this world that you can't do if God's on your side. If God is for you, who can be against you? Not nobody. And remember, when you walk with God, you can no longer say that it's you against the world. Because God's got your back. He is the world. He's your heart. He's your love. All you got to do is ask to receive. Believe have faith. Amen. Once again, if anybody wants to be prayed for, Jojo, you want to come up and do some, some praying? You don't have to. Service is over, but Jojo Castillo is going to be here for some healing, some prayer. If you want to be healed, pray. Whatever it is, Joe Rogan is here, myself. Right here. Don't forget about the cupcakes and cookies. I know we got a bunch of kids at home somewhere. I need to come get them. But thank you for being here. God bless you. salvation. If there's anybody here that these words touched you, the Lord touched you, and if you're not saved, if you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart, your life, He's here. His presence is so strong. If you die tonight, where are you going to go? If you die, drop dead right now. Where's your soul going to make it? Remember, there is a heaven and there is a hell. And the Lord says, only through me you can enter the kingdom of heaven. Which is salvation. And salvation is a ticket to heaven. Where he'll come. You'll ask him to come into your heart. And he'll pull you out of the of hell. And you accept him. You confess with your tongue that he died and rose and you shall be born again and when you get born again if you were to pass you make it to the kingdom of heaven if there's anybody that wants to accept Jesus into your heart he's here now your, tonight is your night you might say because I know I did it you know what I'll wait till tomorrow what if you die in your bed and you don't get to see tomorrow where's your soul going to be when you do open your eyes. So I encourage you. Tonight is your night if you're, if you're willing to accept. The doors open. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord. Thank you for leading open that door. By your word, by your blood, by your stripes, Lord. Your hidden power, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Make free muscles.
touch your heart, Father God, and show her what it is and what it's going to be. So I command you to Father God, I thank you, Father God. You're here, Father God. Open this heart, Father God. Heal her daughter, Father God. Heal her daughter, Father God. Heal her daughter, Father God. In your name we pray, Father God. Thank you. Thank you.